So just the thought of different foods on your plate touching kind of really gross you out and make you just sort of feel like, no, I can't eat that. You've got to have everything separate, even though you know it's all going to the same place. If this is you, then you could have brumotactylophobia. Even though it's called a phobia, it is considered that, uh, and it is, it is classed as a phobia, as, as we've got with the name, but it is actually classed, or could be classed as an OCD, because for some people, um, that separation and that neatness on the plate could be part of, of why they, you know, are an OCD, or more likely, um, it could be a sense of control. So you have to have your food separate to give you a sense of control, particularly if when you were, were little and you were a child, that you had a parent that would tell you what to eat, when to eat, how you could eat, and was quite strict with you. Now it might be that you just like separate flavors, which is why you like the food separately. Mm. But most probably, and I know that, I think I had a bit of this, is that your parents, because you were a fussy eater when you were a child, would hide food underneath other food. Uh, and oh, I know God. that. I think every parent has tried yeah, that. Yeah, you've had the vegetables under the mashed potato. <laughs> hiding and, it. Yeah, hiding it. And then you've, then you've had a bite and it's like, oh, that, that te that's the different texture. I don't yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So you need to know everything needs to be visible. Yeah, um, so yeah, parents hiding food is, is, is often quite Did we actually do that as parents? I, can't, I don't think we did, did we? Yeah, I don't know. I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But some people I actually, had it done to me as a child, yeah, I know that. Yeah, but some people yeah, actually yeah. just enjoyed those different tastes as well, I guess. So, um, you know, that's important. But it could be um, that you actually used food touching as an excuse. So, like, for example, if you were a picky eater when you were little and, and your parents were like, no, you've got to eat that, then in some respects, saying, I can't eat that now because it's touching, could actually give you a good excuse not to eat it. So it kind of was used with a positive intent. Some people just don't like different textures of food mm. uh, in the same mouthful. Yeah. Uh, it can be a sensory overload for, for them. Yeah, but I mean, obviously we are a product of our, our environment. So I guess for some people it could even be learned from somebody else. Uh, but there's always some sort of positive intent behind it. And it always goes back uh, to something that's always an origin. That, that actually started this behaviour, this need, this intention off. I mean, I've got to be honest, me personally, I, I wouldn't say that it's, I, I don't mind my food together, but if I was having a breakfast, for example, I can't cope with um, like the juice from my beans infiltrating like my bacon and eggs kind of scenario on my plate. I couldn't cope with that. But that said, I don't mind bean juice infiltrating if I was having like fries, chips, that kind of thing. Now, and, and, and following up, Eva, that's uh, interesting because I'm all right with all foods, but when it comes to uh, to breakfast, and I must say, when you said bacon, we have turkey bacon, don't we? Or, we do. Uh, our, uh, our, our veggie bacon. Our veggie bacon. Uh, but um, uh, I don't like, the one thing that I don't like is my egg yolks on the bean juice. And it's just the one thing, uh, you know. So, so maybe everyone's got a bit of this. Yeah, maybe everyone's got, got our own little tendencies yeah. there. And I suppose there is some normality then, I guess, in, in some of it. But who'd have thought that you might have just thought that you were hugely fussy, hugely particular, um, when the truth might be is that you might be brumotactylophobic. Who'd have thought that? And that's quite a mouthful in itself, isn't, isn't it? Isn't it? I uh, hope you found that interesting. We really enjoyed researching this and it's something that we do come across um, occasionally. And I really hope that you found that that was quite informative and quite interesting. And if you did enjoy it, do make sure that you have a look around our YouTube channel. Do please subscribe. And in our book, uh, Conquering Anxiety, we actually do cover OCDs and phobias with our process on how to help both those things. So hope you enjoyed that. Thanks ever so much.